r slash credit. High school teachers have read it. What's the most awkward position a student has ever put you in? I had a student, male, freshman, 15, who was a great student. He got put into my remedial class mid-semester. Basically he'd been a trouble student in another class and he'd shown up to that class only a few weeks before because he'd previously been at another school. That's a minor red flag. But, in my class, great student. His biggest issues were that he was intelligent and the class really was below his level. Boredom often leads to poor behavior choices. 2. His home life was basically in the shitter. Without going into all the details, let's just say it was pretty bad. I brought a lot of this up with the school counselor. She did some digging, as much as she could, and confirmed a lot of it. But with an entire student body population, she didn't have much else she could do, since he wasn't an, and I quote, immediate danger. I brought it up with his former teacher, whose class he'd left, and she seemed to think that he just had issues with female authority figures, again, possibly stemming from the home, that's a red flag. She suspected it had something to do with his mother or older sister, but could never get anything out of him. After he'd been my student for a while, and I'd learned all of this, things were going fairly swimmingly, until he shows up one Friday during lunch and says that he's come to say goodbye. That's a red flag. Getting him to talk, he basically says that he's hit a breaking point at home and he's going to run away. He's got a girlfriend that he can probably convince to let him sleep over for a few nights while he gets things together, but one that won't last long and two, his mother will quickly find him there. His plan from there is basically to be homeless or to attempt suicide, which he rationalizes will either end the BS or at least get him a decent bed and a few meals at a hospital. I go through a bunch of mental checklists. I ask him to reconsider a few times. Eventually get him around to trying to reconcile with his mother for the sake of his younger brother and ask him if just having a few days away from home might help. Reluctantly, he agrees. So, after school I took him home with me. He slept on the couch, did chores around the house and in the yard. Was respectful to me and my wife and my own kid. We got him to call home on Friday, ended in a shouting match over the phone, and again on Sunday morning, much less shouting, but still some there. Told him that he'd need to go home on Sunday night, tried to talk to mom face to face, gave him some de-escalation tips, drove him home. He was at school Monday and seemed fine. However, he still seemed agitated. His mom later wound up calling me, repeatedly, accusing me of molesting her son and grooming him for molestation and shouting and ranting. I told her that if she felt so strongly about it that she could go to the authorities but that I had weeks of documentation about his condition in addition to his own testimony. That I had the best interests of one of my students at the forefront and if she had an interest in his health and future well-being that she might want to re-examine her own relationship with her sons. <laughs> Subbed for a high school Spanish class one day. A female upperclassman showed up during my planning hour looking for the normal Spanish teacher. After being informed of the teacher's absence, she stuck around and initiated small talk, claiming she was a teacher's aide in gym and wasn't needed on this day. Based only on my own instinct, she seemed a little too friendly for having never met me before. Just felt off right from the start. I propped my classroom door open and didn't really give her much feedback as I prepared for class, but she kept talking, and it kept getting more personal. Without any prompting, she began explaining how she'd moved out of her parents' house, she appeared to be 16 or 17, and now lived with three college-aged males, while she worked as a waitress at what sounded like a strip club. That's typically not the type of thing to open up to a random substitute teacher you met five minutes ago. She segued from that to men's fetishes and how some of the people she served had a thing for pregnant women. It seemed like she was angling to see if I'd open up about my own interests that wasn't going to happen. I try to be a good listener for my students under most circumstances, but this one set off some alarms. I stood up, asked where the drinking fountain was, already knew, but needed an excuse, then promptly left the room. 
and didn't return until my planning hour had concluded. I left school that day wondering if I was just being paranoid or whether a girl with that kind of story is something I should have reported to the front office or whether it's a home life thing and thus out of a school's control. One way or another, it probably tops the awkward teaching mountain for me so far. TL, doctor, female high school student approached substitute teacher and began talking about life working at strip club then tried to engage in conversation about sexual fetishes. Edit, to those wondering why I didn't report this student to someone. I'm with you. It's definitely something I'd change if I could go back in time. It's interesting how easy the answer can seem to be in hindsight. As a young teacher at the time, who was just visiting that school for the day, it was one of those experiences that helped build experience, so to speak. I left school that day with doubt as to whether I should have said anything to someone. It served as on-the-job training that when in doubt, tell someone. I was a long-term substitute in a rural high school right of college. I was teaching history and this girl, probably 16, was texting the entire time without letting up, even after I warned her repeatedly. Finally I confiscate the phone. The rule was, if your phone was taken the only person who could get it back was a parent slash guardian at the end of the day due to the fact the school was dealing with the backlash of a major sexting scandal. During lunch I'm setting up a lesson for the next class and a girl comes back into the classroom and asks for her phone back in which I tell her it was already turned into the office. At this point you can tell she is getting annoyed and ask me to call down and get it back for her in which I tell her I can't. She begins to bowl telling me that her parents were out of town until Saturday and being that it was a 3 day weekend the earliest she could get it back was Tuesday afternoon. I tell her I'm sorry for that, but the rules were the rules. After I tell her that she immediately switches her tune and begins to ask me about my wife and son and I tell her it is neither the time nor place to discuss it. With zero humor in her voice she looks at me in the eye and tells me if I call down to request her phone back she will give me a blowjob. Without skipping a beat I immediately reopen the door she closed and wave for the teacher across the hall to come into the room. When the teacher comes in the student storms out in huff. I explain to the teacher what happened and immediately report it to the principal who calls the girl in. When the principal and school counselor are talking to her she admits that she offered to blow me and then says you must hire a ref asterisk asterisk asterisk. Girl gets sent back to class and the principal calls the superintendent and this snowballs all the way to a meeting with the student, her parents, school administrators and their lawyer the next week. Parents are obviously irate and accuse me of molesting their daughter and luckily there was enough evidence to prove nothing happened. After the parents realize their daughter was the source of this massive embarrassment they decide to pull her out and homeschool her. Luckily, I was only there for another week, but I decided to stop subbing after that. I watched a porno with my English teacher just months before she retired. We were quite uncomfortable. E. Completely forgot I posted this. Here's the context. In my senior year English class we had to present some multimedia presentation about a Shakespeare play. I'm not great with Shakespeare, but it was the play that starts with witches saying boil boil, toil and trouble. So they acted out that scene, recorded it to VHS, and then did the following scene, and explained the context. They turned in the VHS tape, and went on their way. Two months later this tape was returned, and one of the kids put it in the VCR for the class to watch. Act 1 scene 1 went fine, Act 1 scene 2 had been spliced to include a blonde chick with massive fake tits going to town with a dildo, apparently mid-orgasm. Everyone in the classroom sat stunned while the kid that played the tape stammered I didn't. Uh, we didn't do that. That's not our tape, as the ancient English teacher screamed from the other end of the room turn it off. Just turn it off. The English teacher was old and about to retire anyway, but that event was the nail in the coffin. There were rumors that she may become part time or maybe just another year, but all of those were quashed after the porno event. By the next class period everybody had heard what happened, and those of us that saw the tape were hounded for details. Rumors flew around about who doctored the tape, but the truth was never revealed prior to graduation. 
it's come up as lore in class reunions, but nobody is sure on what really happened. This was one of the funniest slash most awkward situation that ever happened to a teacher slash member of staff when I was 15. So back in HS, our old principal had just retired, so we had this new principal slash headmistress start at the school. We had to have some big assembly in the main hall because she wanted to introduce herself as the new principal etc. Anyway, she's in her mid to late 40s I assume, blonde, white lady with short cropped hair. For some reason she has this whole powerpoint presentation being projected and she starts showing us slides with pictures of her family and telling us her whole life story. She had two 11 over 12 year old mixed race daughters who had also just started as freshmen in the school. The next slide is a picture of her husband. He's this good looking huge muscular black dude and literally, as soon as his picture comes up, some kid called Dylan yells in the middle of the assembly hall she likes big black dick. There was literally the split second of absolute silence, even the teachers didn't know how to react. And she was like frozen on the stage, it was so awkward to watch. Then people started losing their shit laughing. And you could see the teachers plowing through the assembly hall trying to find the kid. She quickly recovered and moved on to the next slide trying to pretend like she hadn't heard that. Not a teacher but this happened to me in HS. I had this English teacher who I found very very attractive point she was very sweet. And one of the qualities that I will never forget was her smile. Just seeing it made me happy, but also, she had huge tits, I was in high school come on. Anyway as a horned up typical high school dude I couldn't help but have sexual fantasies play out in my head in the middle of class, especially when I was bored point it would range from experiences. I had porn or any hot girl I wanted to do it with, point is this one day I was actually daydreaming about plowing her, and it was vivid to point I mean my brain just knew how to create vivid porno in my head it was horrible. Quite proud of how I can visualize, though point getting off track, obviously in doing this certain things, could arise point embarrassed I look down at my throbbing shame in hopes that no one in class sees it, and flips out point, as soon as I look up something in my head tells me to look across the classroom, only to discover that my teacher is trying to look under the table to see what I was looking at point she was convinced I had an electronic device out and proceeded to interrogate me in front of the class point she goes j point what do you have in your hands? It was my throbbing shame to which at this point I'm clutching hard in hopes of extinguishing the shame. I look up and same as it isn't what you think it is point she then made my greatest fear come true. Get up she said point to which my throbbing shame decided to get even. Harder I can feel my face get hot so now I'm feeling embarrassment while I'm also turned on and trying to figure out what to do next point all my high school brain could spit out was miss I really don't want to do that point to which she retorted j I need you to get up and move your hands and hand over that device or I'll send you to the office point the shame continued to throb point the class continued to stare point she then bolted towards me with annoyance written all over her face towards my desk point my heartbeat quickened you could imagine how i figured that out and she stopped right over me move point your point hands she threw and points if you know the reference i didn't know what else to do point so i closed my eyes and turned away at the same time i moved my hands oh she let out in a gasp point my eyes snapped open point oh, what what do you mean no? I tried to look at her, only to see her eyes averting mine, and a pool of red washing over her face point she then stuttered out to the rest of the class, yeah they were watching, but had no idea what was going on, I returned to UHH the assignments you, and trailed off as she walked away, and that was the time my teacher saw my erection point she never looked at me again for the rest of the year. Not a teacher, but part of school head staff and early 20s at the time. I'm grabbing my lunch at the school cafeteria, and one young lady behind me says, Looks like you're having a bad day. I respond along the lines of I've had better girl steps towards me, opens her arms, and says it looks like you could use a hug. Somehow I talk her out of that, saying I'm not really into hugging, unspoken, with high school students and somehow escape with a pat on the back instead. 
I'm almost forgotten about the incident when a few weeks later, Valentine's Day rolls around, and guess who I get a card from. It wasn't sexual or anything, but given the possible situation brewing I pass that on to the principal. I was a bit turn about it as maybe she was just trying to be nice to the grumpy at guy, but didn't want to end up in a situation where I walk into an office slash class to a student planning a compromising situation. Hopefully she didn't get in any trouble for it. Aside from that, the high school was relatively mellow exempting pennies in optical drives and gum under desks. The middle schools though, dear lord. Pubescent young girls fanning themselves and waving he i e i mr computer guy when I passed by, pubescent young boys being assholes and trying to act macho, akarudaf, to impress the girls, etc etc. The boys I dealt with by ensuring their next lodging got a Hello Kitty desktop theme. The girls I just tried to avoid. <laughs> Not a teacher, but I have a very awkward story. We had an English teacher at our school that student taught in our high school, then got the job as one of our middle school teachers. She was one of those short cute girls that looks kinda younger than she actually is, so naturally all the high school guys would just gawk over her. During her time student teaching, my older brother and some of his friends had noticed several times that her panties would peek over whatever pants she was wearing some days. One of my brother's friends who was a known creep, when it came to looking at the ladies, was able to snap a pic of one incident in the last few weeks before she was done teaching at the high school. Fast forward to when she got hired as a middle school teacher. I was in her class, which was a huge relief, our other English teacher was god awful, and the photo had circulated all around the high school by then, and now was getting into the hands of the guys in my grade. Some idiot in my class, very creepily, had the photo printed and taped to the inside of the cover of his notebook for that class. One day, the cover gets too tattered and falls off in class. The teacher notices a picture. She gets beat red and politely tells the kid to stay by after class. Once she understood the situation, since the kid obviously had to spill everything so he wouldn't be pinned as the guy to took the creep shot, she became so embarrassed she started looking for a new teaching job. She left two years later after finding one. Really loved her class through, I got an A, and she said I had a knack for writing stories. I had a student that I taught in 7th grade, and he was my friends, the librarian. Student aide in 8th grade who had horrible hygiene, and he was often bullied for it. For his birthday we decided to create a shaving kit for him. We filled it with cologne, soaps, a razor and other items. We ordered a pizza and we decorated, closed the library, and had a small party to celebrate him. When he opened his gift he started to cry. At first we thought it was happiness, but it quickly escalated to sobs. We thought we offended him, and began to apologize. Through his sobs we finally made out, I thought it would make him stop. We looked at each other, and gently asked what he meant. Slowly the story emerged that his father had been sexually abusing him since he was 5, and he thought if he made himself as gross as possible his dad would stop. By law we had to call child protective services and we explained that to him. As I went to do that my friend tried to console him. As it was his birthday his mom showed up to pick him up early, arriving just after CPS. The caseworker let her in the room and the first words she said were, couldn't you just hold on for three more months? It seemed she knew what was happening and was getting her LPN so they could move out. She had not worked before. This sad story does have a happy eye ending. CPS in conjunction with our school social worker found them a shelter so they could stay together. The father was convicted and sent to prison where he was eventually stabbed to death. Asterisk I should have explained that mom was regularly beaten and told that she and son would be killed if they tried to leave. I'm not in any way excusing her behavior, just putting in the context. Edit spelling. Edit 2. Explanation. Also not a teacher, but being somewhat witty and always a wussy trying to get a laugh to make work enjoyable, I caused a few awkward moments among teachers, 11th grade English, a friend and I sat in the last two seats in the last row against a wall, 
Our teacher, Ms. Cannell we'll call her, was beautiful, and was a center of many in an appropriate conversation between us. One day after getting stoned at lunch, and not paying attention we got into it about her, apparently too toasted to notice how loud we were, until the whole class laughed and interrupted her lesson. Cool as the other side of the pillow, and with the sickest smirk ever responded without missing a beat on her teaching. By the way boys, I've heard everything you two have said about me all year. Yeah. It was one of the scariest, hottest, most awesome things ever. Another time, PG Co, we had to do a 10 slide, group powerpoint on a president of choice. I selected JFK and my partner was basically non-existent for the project. Fast forward to the day of the presentation with two empty slides and down a handful of facts. I stumbled across his autopsy photos and used to as the last two slides with one page mostly about conspiracy theories of that day in Dallas and the last a Halloween recipe for jello brains. I got a 90 with minus 10 for not completing the task but also bonus plus 10 for creativity, making the grade 100 for doing the project myself and because my teacher and I were both tenacious D slash Metallica fans. As a pointless side note, I'm pretty sure both of said teachers dated at one point, but I had already graduated. <laughs> Not a teacher, and I don't plan on ever being a teacher, but I was a student with a great story 10th grade geometry, my teacher was absent, so we had a substitute. The substitute was supposed to go over the directions left by the teacher. It was basically a very brief math lesson, followed by a movie for the remainder of the class. For some reason the substitute thought it would be a good idea to scratch everything the teacher told him to do and instead talk about sex to a bunch of 10th grade geometry students. The teacher continued to tell us how he was a 35 year old virgin waiting to meet his love and marry her. If it's not bad enough the teacher was talking to a bunch of 14 year olds about sex when he should have been teaching math, the teacher wasn't the most appealing either. Tall skinny guy round dorky glasses with a bald head with a crown of hair. I don't remember much as I kind of zoned out as I didn't want to be a part of anything that was about to happen. In my head I knew that this was going to get him fired. And that was the last of the substitute teacher. He was fired immediately. The most awkward part is I see him almost every night when I cross the street when I leave work. This is a gross porter potty story. Read with caution. My friend was in high school and on some sort of history trip with her history teacher and a young teaching assistant. My friend kept on playing with her phone despite her history teacher telling my friend repeatedly to put it away. Finally, the history teacher said something like, if I see that phone one more time, there's no telling what I'm gonna do with it. During the trip, they are visiting an old army fort that is being remodeled and there are only porta potties nearby. My friend wanted to use her phone, but was afraid of being caught. So she found an unused porta potty and used her phone in there. When she was done, she tried to put her phone in her purse. It slipped and, you guessed it, fell into the potty. Even though the potty hadn't been used, she was still too grossed out to get it with her hand. So she ran to find the teacher or the assistant for help. It took her a long time, but she found the assistant inside one of the buildings. As they are leaving the building, to their horror they see the teacher leave the porta potty and go around to the other side of another building. As my friend and the assistant are approaching the potty, my friend is saying repeatedly, please don't let what I think she did become true. It was true alright. The teacher had taken a dump on her cell. They were both grossed out, not wanting to deal with the situation. They both found the teacher. The teacher didn't believe them until they showed her the evidence. Mortified, the teacher proceeds to remove the cell with the help of a plastic bag and clean it off with tissues. But my friend refused to believe it wasn't on purpose. After what the teacher said to her on the bus, there was even a conference with her mom, the principal, the teacher, the assistant, and my friend about it. When I taught high school summer school, the principal had a policy of no passes during the day, since the kids were only in school for about 3 hours, and had a long break in the middle of it. We get back from the long break, and a young man immediately asks if he can go to the bathroom. I remind him of the no passes policy. He begins yelling at me about having an infection, 
and needing to pee, and then threatens to piss on my desk. He went so far as to unzip his pants, which I heard more than saw, because I had turned away to get to the phone. The rest of the class is pretending to do silent sustained reading. I called the principal to either escort the student to the bathroom or out of the school for the day. When he heard the suggestion of escorting him to the bathroom, the student then began screaming about the principal wanting to see his dick and wanting to watch him pee. I'm pretty sure he got suspended for the rest of the day and then I just acted like it never happened when he came back to class. I also worked in a juvenile detention center. There were a lot of rules and lingo that I was not familiar with, so the kids would sort of unintentionally put me on the spot. One day, my boys detention class is writing a poem. This class is different every day, based on who was picked up the previous night and who is waiting for trial. It's not like the other groups that are constant for so many months at a time, with no change in the roster. Mainly, they're just made for interesting one day lesson plans, but it also meant I didn't always know the class I was going to have or who would be in it. So sad to see the same kids come through after being released and then getting in trouble again. Anyway, this new boy chooses to write his poem about his grandmother. It was a form poem and not that intense, but suddenly he is sobbing and asks me for a PTO. I have no idea what a PTO is at that point, and hearing the O, I think officer, and I'm like sure. Yes, I'll get someone. The students travel to class with a guard, so I turn to the guard for some help thinking we are having a real meltdown here. He just shakes his head and tells the kid no. I found out later that a PTO is a personal timeout, which the kid had been abusing all day to get away from the group and out of all sorts of typical juvie situations, but it seemed to me that he was really actually upset about the content of his poem. He wrote me a note on the assignment saying that he was sorry to cry like that, but he realized he might not get out to see his grandma again before she died. I never asked the kids why they were in, so I always figured maybe he just did something really awful and knew he was going to real prison after juvie. Although it was awkward at the time, I now have the claim to fame with my regular public high school students that I once made a kid in juvie cry. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.